Welcome to the Mirror of the World, and I want to thank you for joining today. My name is Buki Adioshun, and I am excited to bring you a fresh edition today. Before we start, I would like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for the opportunity to look into your word today. Lord, I thank you because you will open our eyes to see what you want us to see. Lord, I specifically ask that whatever we see in your word today, Lord, write it in our hearts so that we may not sin against you and increase in the knowledge of you. Lord, give us the capacity to hold your word. Give us the grace to obey your word and do what you want us to do. Lord, I thank you because whatever we see in your word today, our lives will be transformed into it by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, joining. In our last video, we said the Lord will raise up help for you in the enemy's camp. The Lord will raise up help for you in the enemy's camp and then we said that do all that is in your heart uh stop procrastinating uh, but before you go ahead and do it make sure you get a word from the lord sometimes we think that when you receive a word from the lord everything is going to be fine everything is going to go well smoothly that's a confirmation that the lord is giving you a word no sometimes it doesn't work like that uh, the devil want to challenge you, want to test what you had. He's going to raise opposition against you. Remember what Paul said? He said, a door of opportunity is open before us, but there are many adversaries. So the fact that you are facing some challenge doesn't mean that God is not with you or that God has not called you. Uh, you just need to persevere and wait for the manifestation of the word of the lord so i want to encourage you to particularly go and watch the video we did on first samuel chapter 13. oh my god uh what will people say such a powerful powerful video uh, that is going to help you uh watch the one we did on first samuel chapter 14 to the importance of not procrastinating and doing everything that is in your heart so today we are going to so to speak uh i'll call it we are coming to the end of the reign of saul it's amazing because um i don't know how many years he reigned for as a king for you know up until this moment but we will see that um you know of course he was still the king and I think he was there for so many years, but definitely the Lord was not with him. I can imagine many leaders today uh, who are professing the name of the Lord. They are prophesying in the name of the Lord. They are organizing service. They are doing different things in the name of the Lord. But yet the Lord is not with them. And a lot of people are following them. Crowds are following them. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not follow blindly in jesus name um so the other the one thing that really killed saul and i want to encourage you to go over first samuel yourself again one kill one thing that kills saul is people you know he is a man that is mindful of what people will say uh he is a man that you know even if everything is not going on well internally as long as the people are happy that's fine and that is what has put a lot of people into trouble so there are a lot of lessons that we can learn from the life of saul so i want to invite you as we read first samuel chapter 15 and then we'll be right back uh, to see what the lord has said i want to read today from the easy to read version of the bible and then you know let's see what the lord is going to show us from his word today one day samuel said to saul the lord sent me to anoint you king over his people israel now listen to his message the lord said when the israelite came out of egypt the amalekite tried to stop them from going to canaan i saw what the amalekites did now go fight the amalekite you must completely destroy 
the Amalekites and everything that belongs to them. Don't let anything leave. You must kill all the men and women and all the children and little babies. You must kill all of their cattle and sheep and all of their camels and donkeys. Saul gathered the army together at Telem. There were 200,000 full soldiers and 10,000 other men, including the men of Judah. Then Saul went to the city of Amalek and waited in the valley. He said to the knights, Go away, go away, leave the Amalekites. Then I won't destroy you with the Amalekites. You show kindness to the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. So the Canaanites left the Amalekites. Saul defeated the Amalekites. He fought them and chased them all the way from Havilah to Shore at the border of Egypt. Agag was the king of the Amalekites. Saul captured Agag alive. Saul let Agag live, but he killed all the men in Agag's army. Saul and the Israelite soldiers felt bad about destroying everything, so they let Agag live. They also kept the fat cattle, the best sheep, and the lambs. They kept everything that was worth keeping. They didn't want to destroy those things. They destroy only what was not worth keeping. Mm. Then Samuel received this message from the Lord. Saul has stopped following me. So I am sorry that I made him king. He is not doing what I tell him to do. Samuel became angry and cried to the Lord all night. Saul got up early the next morning and went to meet Saul. But the people told Samuel, Saul went to Camel. He went there to set up a stone monument to honor himself. Then he left there and went down to Gilgal. So Samuel went to Saul. Saul had just offered the first part of the things he took from the Amalekite as a burnt offering to the Lord. When Saul came near to Saul, Saul greeted him and said, When Samuel came near to Saul, Saul greeted him and said, The Lord bless you. I have obeyed the Lord's command. But Samuel said, Then what is that sound I hear? Why do why do I hear sheep and cattle? Saul said, The soldiers took them from, from the Amalekites. They saved the best sheep and cattle to burn as sacrifices to the Lord your God. But we destroyed everything else. Samuel said to Saul, Stop. Let me tell you what the Lord told me last night. Saul answered, Tell me what he said. Samuel said, in the past, you didn't think you were important, but the Lord chose you to be king. So you became the leader of the tribe of Israel. The Lord sent you on a special mission. He said, go and destroy all the Amalekites. Destroy them or fight them until they are completely finished. So why didn't you listen to the Lord? You did what the Lord said is wrong because you wanted to keep what you took in battle. Saul said, but I did obey the Lord. I went there. I went where the Lord sent me. I destroyed all the Amalekites. I brought back only one, their king Agag, and the soldiers took the best of sheep and cut it to sacrifice to the Lord your God at Giga. But Samuel answered, which pleases the Lord more, burnt offerings and sacrifices or obeying his command? It is better to obey the Lord than to offer sacrifices to him. It is better to listen to him than to offer the fat from ram, the fat from rams. Refusing to obey is as bad as the sin of sorcery. Being stubborn and doing what you want is like the sin of worshipping idols. You refuse to obey the Lord's command. So he now refuses to accept you as king. Then Samuel said then Saul said to Samuel I have sinned. I did not obey the Lord's command, and I did not do what you told me. I was afraid of the people, and I did what they said. Now I beg you, forgive me for doing this sin. Come back with me, so I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I won't go back with you. You rejected the Lord's command, and now the Lord rejects you as a king of Israel. When Samuel turned to leave, Saul called Samuel's robe, the robe tore. Samuel said to Saul, in this same way, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today. He has given the kingdom to one of your friends, a man who is better, who is a better person than you. The Lord, the one who lives forever, the God of Israel, does not lie and will not change his mind. 
is not like a man who is always changing his mind. Saul answered, All right, I sin, but please come back with me. Show me some respect in front of the leaders and Israelite. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Samuel went back with Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. <laughs> Samuel said, Bring King Agag of the Amalekites to me. Agag came to Samuel. Agag was tied with chains and thought, Surely he won't kill me. But Samuel said to Agag, Your sword took babies from their mother. So now your mother will have no children. And Samuel cut Agag to pieces before the Lord at Giga. Then Samuel left and went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his home in Gibeah. After that, Samuel never saw Saul again. Samuel was very sad for Saul, and the Lord was very sorry that he had made Saul king of Israel. Wow, an amazing chapter. There is a load of things in this chapter today. Uh, before I even go into my note, um, I want us to see something in that played out on verse 30. So this whole issue about Saul disobeying the Lord is about the people. That's why I want to encourage you to watch that video we did on 1 Samuel chapter 13. You know, uh, where uh, Saul offers sacrifices unto the Lord, burnt offering unto the Lord, a role that was supposed to perform a role that was supposed to be performed by the priest. Uh, but because the soldiers deserted him, uh, you know, uh, he still went ahead and did it anyway. But he says something here. And uh, I'm saying this because of do so false that everything we do, we use the man of God, the man of God to validate it. So we think because the man of God approves something, that means God is in it. You know, uh, you went and you took the name of the person to the pastor or to the prophet. And you said because uh, the prophet prayed upon it and the prophet said it's okay. It's okay for you to go and marry that person. The Lord will help you. I'm not going to say more than that. But let's look at what plays out here. So verse 30, uh, Saul recognized that he has sinned. And then what was he supposed to do? You know, one of the things I'm going to do is God giving me the graces. We're going to do a, a, a compare. Is it compare or contrast? We're going to compare and uh, contrast or whatever it is, Samuel and David and see, you know, occasions where both of them missed it and the judgment that the Lord passed. So, but let's look at Saul in this case. Saul say, I have seen. Or make it look good to the people. He said, come back with me. He said, show me some respect in front of the leaders and the Israelites. You know, some of our political office holders, you know, we see the bishop following them. We see the archbishop. We see the priest. We see the pastor, you know, following them. So we think everything is right. Everything is all right. But in the case of Saul and Samuel here, Samuel missed it. What Samuel should have done is that, uh, Samuel should have decided, and um, Samuel, Samuel shouldn't have followed Saul, so that it's clear to the people that the Lord has rejected Saul. But what did Samuel do? Uh, verse 31, 1 Samuel 15 says, Samuel went back with Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. Uh, well, we can look at it in another way that, okay, Samuel went back with Saul, uh, so that Saul could repent, but we know that that was not the motive. What was in Saul's heart really was not to repent. It's to make it look good to people. At our prayer meeting yesterday, uh, as we were praying, the Lord opened our eyes to see the danger of packaging. And we, we saw um, the, the situation of Jericho. Uh, the city was a beautiful city, but there were loads of miscarriages. No, it wasn't productive. So, Saul is a man that likes to look good to the people. Uh, he loves good appearance. It doesn't matter even if things are not going on well. So that was exactly what happened in this particular case. And then he needed somebody to validate him. Beware of people who 
uh, like to draw people's name. They don't, they don't come to you on their own credibility. And sometimes this happens a lot in ministry. Uh, so uh, we begin to throw names and say, uh, we are sons of Dr. Dollar. Uh, we partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministry. As if, you know, to be honest with you, by the, by the grace of God, <laughs> uh, we are partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministry. I happen to have known Dr. Dollar a long time ago. Uh, I don't have any problem with you partnering with that ministry, but to be honest with you, they didn't call me into ministry and they are not God. Okay, so <laughs> uh, uh, those of us that uh, we are looking for sons of Bishop D.T. T. D. Jakes, we are looking for sons of uh, Prophet Lukau, uh, Lukau, uh, 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 Prophet, you know, all those prophets, you know what I'm talking about, uh, even Prophet T.B. Joshua. Uh, and Chris Oyakilume, you know, you, you know all the big names, um, the ones that I don't know. And then, you know, we, we go to their church because we, they are affiliated with those men of God. This is exactly what happened here. Saul so said, make it look good to the people. Obviously, the people know that as long as Samuel is still with Saul, so they're going to think that the Lord is with Saul. So you think that because they told you that they are partnered with Kenneth Copeland, so you think that, you know, and because you know Kenneth Copeland, you know what the Lord has done in their life, so you think the Lord is in that ministry. What you didn't know is that the Lord left. Okay, I'm going to stop there. One other thing that I saw in this chapter, I'm telling you, I really thank God for this program, The Mirror of the World. It blesses me. You know, it's one thing for you as a pastor to preach a message to people whereby you just preach to people and you give it to them. But it's another thing when, when you go through the scripture and you are preaching and your message is actually blessing you and is actually ministering to you and making you to actually reflect and do some things in your life. So here we saw something. Uh, I, I noticed when Samuel accused Saul and said, what is this noise of, of, of sheep and rams? He said, I kept them for the Lord your God. I did not see it written anywhere where, Sam, uh, where Saul addressed God as his God. Is the Lord thy God, the God of Samuel. Okay? A lot of us are like that. We don't call God our God. He's not our God. He's not our Father. And that's why we struggle, we find it difficult to do some of the things that he wants us to do. Is the God of Elijah, the answers by fire, is the God of, you understand what I'm saying? Now, uh, this is one of the mistakes of Saul. And, I, and if you have been doing that, I pray, I pray and I beg you that you begin to see God personally so that he becomes your God. So, you see his commandment as not a commandment that is coming from someone or is a commandment that is coming directly. So you don't see it as something that, oh, uh, the pastor is asking me to do too much. Um, they're, they're asking us to give too much. No. So when you see it coming from the Lord, if you are not able to give, you just tell the Lord, say, Lord, this one uh, is too difficult for me. I don't know how I'm going to do it. You're going to have to help my faith. And to be honest with you, God is not going to kill you for that because what is said in his word is that first, there must be a willingness. Okay? There must be a willingness in your heart to want to do. And then what you do is judge by what you have and not what you don't have. Okay? Now, let's look at the key thing here. Uh, the Lord told Samuel, he said, look, Saul have stopped following me. And that's really interesting, you know, because, I, okay, Saul, Saul has stopped following me. What did he do? Now, I found out that the sin of Saul was partial obedience. And partial obedience is disobedience. Now, this is what happened. And I pray today in the name of Jesus, the Lord will help you understand what is important to him. You know, I used to read the story of a man called Uzziah. You know, for those of you who are watching, watching me, Bible uh, students, 
you you know the person that I was talking about. Who will read that story somewhere along the line? When maybe when we get to Second Samuel, I think yes, yeah, Second Samuel, and uh, they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant back, you know, and uh, they were dancing, they were singing, and the Ark was supposed to was about to you know fell off the cart, and then there was a man who touched the Ark, and then the Lord slew him, and the man died immediately. I mean, the joy turned into something else. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> when I read another account in First Samuel, that they, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant from the Philistine to the people called Shemesh, Gimesh, or I can't remember the precise name. The Bible says that these people looked at the Ark of the Covenant, and because they look, 53,000, 53,000 or 50, over 50,000 people died in a day. Can you see that? Just by looking at the ark. <laughs> when, when the Lord told Moses, eh, Moses said, show me your glory. God said, no. No man shall see me and live. No wonder he took Enoch. I believe he not walked with God to a point that he saw the glory of God. I said, no, you can't go back. You see my glory. Nobody see my glory and live. So the God that we are talking about, you, we got to be careful with him. Our prayer should be, Lord, please um, help me to know, to understand what's important to you, the key thing to you. You know, because I, I, I look at the life of Saul. Saul is not the first person to disobey God. You know, um, we get the story of David, you know, the man committed adultery. The man committed murder. I mean, all sorts of things. And the Lord still said, his seed shall come from his lineage. Wow. Amazing. Okay. But in the case of Saul here, uh, what we saw here, why is it important for us? We really need to get to know God, to get to know what's important to God. Look, the fact that uh, somebody divorced his wife, and got away with it does not mean you're gonna get away with it. Uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, somebody committed fornication and didn't get a sister committed for fornication and did not get pregnant does not, does not mean that you are not going to be pregnant if you do it and you will try to abort it, or maybe you are even trying to abort that child right now. You are hearing the word of the Lord. If you do, you're going to die. The fact that somebody did it and nothing happened does not mean you will do it and you will go scot free. Now, we've got to import, we've got to understand how God use us, how he picked us for his assignment, you know, for his work. And we got, we need to understand what is at stake. Uh, so obviously wasn't God's best choice. Um, so was people's choice, you know, God just wanted to give it to them. That was, that was, you know, uh, why the criteria for selecting him was based on physical appearance. He looked good, you know, when they picked him, they said that he was a, he was a tallest man, the tallest man among them. But the instruction here was that go and kill the Amalekites. Now, this was a promise that God gave to Moses and God told Moses, write it down and tell Joshua and to pass it down. Wipe off the Amalekites. This is very important to God. And that's why as a believer, I tell people, when that scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, I believe. When that scripture says we should not be unequally yoked together with the unbeliever, you know, uh we we just need to be careful we just need to do what that scripture says now let, let's read that scripture because we've got to be people who love what god loves so he said you are not the same as those who don't believe so don't join yourself to them god said to saul kill the amalekites what did the guy do the guy kept the best part of the sheep, and then he speared the king Actually, when you read another translation of the Bible, uh, we were told that Saul was moved. He said he didn't kill Agag and he didn't kill all the good things because he feared the people. I believe maybe when they got to the land and they saw some good materials and the people say, oh no, 
Ah, uh, how can you obey the voice of the Lord? The Lord, ah, uh, no, don't worry. The Lord, we understand. Don't worry. We 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 we, we sacrifice on things to the Lord. The Lord will be happy, and that's why some of, some of us things that uh, what the Lord needs is our tithe <laughs> and our offering. So no, the, the Lord is not in. He's not interested. He's not in. Let me know. Is the word interested? But the Lord needs you more than your tithes and offering. The Lord needs you. He needs a time of fellowship with you. It's not the money. Okay, the time, this is how you will know. The time you missed your tithe, or uh, the time you didn't pay your tithe on time, uh, you delayed it. You know, if you go and read in the Old Testament, when you delay your tithe, you have to pay, I think, an extra 25% or thereabout. Did God kill you? No, nothing happened. He still showed you mercy. That's to tell you that what he's looking for is not your money. He said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't come to you. But God needs you. He needs you to know him, to understand him, and follow his commandment. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 15 say, You are not the same as those who don't believe. So don't join yourself to them. Good and evil don't belong together. That's what the Bible says. So, what is the relationship between Saul and uh, Agag, the Amalekite, the people that God say wipe them off? I mean, just look at it. Uh, you you tell me and say the Lord will understand. Uh, somebody has to work in that company. I uh, say, oh, when I get good money, I will use the money to support the kingdom in Africa. I will use the money to support the kingdom in Asia. I say. <laughs> Uh, God needs your money to support the, the kingdom work in Africa. Even before you got that job, the work was going on there. So what he needs is for you to obey him. He wants full obedience, not partial obedience. That is key. Uh, that, that, is, uh, that is very important. You know, let, let's look at uh, what Samuel did. Uh, verse 9 there says, Saul and the Israelite soldier felt bad about destroying everything. The instruction was that they should go and do it. You know, when people begin to run away from people who are politically correct, you know, uh, they begin to interpret the Bible in a way that it suits them, in a way that it makes it appeal to people, and they begin to say things like, you've got to use the sandwich approach. I don't know when we begin to... It's the Bible like a sandwich. Okay, forgive me. Uh, so uh, Saul, in his own wisdom, he felt that, you know what? I'm just going to do the things that I want to do. So in the kingdom of God, sir, ma, you don't do the things you want to do. You do the things that God wants you to do. And we do it the way the Lord wants us to do it. I am not saying it is going to be easy. But one thing that I know for sure is that you can always ask for the grace of God. The Lord will give you the grace to be able to do it. So let's see one or two things more with regards to the story of Saul. Disobedience is a sign that you are no longer following God. Okay? Uh, it's, not, it's not going to church. You can sing in the choir. I can preach. Um, <laughs> you know... Um, one of the lessons that I have learned and I'm praying the Lord is going to help me is that even as preacher, we are guilty of this thing. We got something, especially when you know a member of your church have done something, you preach at them through the, you beat them from the pulpit. You understand? Have you been a victim like that? <laughs> they came and told you something you are supposed to keep as confidential and then you, you find the scripture and you begin to whip the people from the pulpit. You are wasting God's precious time because the people that he has brought to church, you didn't bring them. It's not because you can speak very well. That's why they have come. Uh, the people he brought that he wanted you to preach a word to them that they will repent. You let them go back home without repenting. Okay. So disobedience is a sign that you are no longer following God. When you don't say what God wants you to say in a particular situation, it shows that you are not a friend. Of God. Now, these are the days that we need to check uh, the things that the Lord hates. You know, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 19. I want to encourage you to go and read it, but I'm going to read out some of the things. 
He said that there are seven things that the Lord hates, and I've been able to find out one or two or more things that the Lord hates, you know, for us to just think about. A proud look, you know, let's look at what that means. He said, the spirit that make ones overestimate himself and underestimate others. You know, <laughs> when you consistently bring down people, let me tell you the truth, you got you go problem with pride. That's it. Uh, and the Bible says in the book of James that God resists the proud. Now, let me tell you the meaning of that. Uh, no, not that. I, let me tell you what I find out about the meaning of that. When you say God resists the proud, it means that he will keep them at a distance. And let me give you an illustration. <laughs> um, it's like we are praying to God. And uh, you are praying so hard, but you are being kept by pride at a distance whereby even if you shout at the top of your voice, you people cannot hear you. You needed help, but you are shouting. Uh, somebody has kidnapped you, you are shouting, but they can't hear because you've been kept away. So that's what pride is going to do for you. So there is really no need for you to pray. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. You might as well just rather than praying for four hours or five hours or doing night Fiji. You know, we love to do night Fiji's. Oh, come on. I'm not saying it's not good. But let's sort out our attitude. Let's sort out our character. Let's begin to find out about the things that the Lord hates. The Lord hates a lying tongue. You know, when you just add a, you say, but I have never lied. But mm -mm, when you were sharing the testimony, you add a little bit more. You did not put it correctly. You overstated it. That is lying. That's lying. Um, oh, let me come back to this on pride. You know, uh, I think this is not me. God didn't tell me, but God told one man of God, I think, um, uh, he said, God told him that, Pride is when you refuse to let God help you. <laughs> and he said, when the Lord told him, the Lord said, ah, so, uh, uh, daddy, uh, why, how, why will I refuse to let you help? He said, yes. He said, when you don't pray to me, you don't ask me. He said, you only pray to me when you think the situation is difficult. You cannot handle it. He said, but I want to handle everything in your life. He said, he just knelt down and repent and said, Lord, please. So me, now, everything. There is nothing too small for God to do for me. I just ask him for everything. Okay. Hands that shed innocent blood. So you can read all this in Proverbs chapter 6. A heart that manufactures wicked thoughts and plans. When you devise evil in your heart. The Bible says that the Lord hates those people. Feet that are swift in running to do evil. A false witness. Who breathes out lies, even under oath? You know it is wrong, and uh, uh, you know in your organization they know you are a Christian, and they know that you are going to tell the truth, and they have put you in the witness box. And because the person you <laughs> it looked good, you didn't want to offend the person, uh, and then what did you do? They asked you question. And then you lie. You know, just tell them simple. Look, I know the truth, but I'm not going to tell you simple. They're not going to kill you. I mean, that's the worst case scenario. <laughs> scenario, But, you know, uh, it might as well be good for you to tell people, look, whatever you think that, uh, you know, if they ask me to come and be a witness, <laughs> you don't want me to say, don't do it around me because I'm going to tell it as it is. Okay. Uh, Isaiah chapter 61 verse 8 says, um, for I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate stealing. I hate robbery. Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. This one is controversial, but I'm going to say it the way the scripture says it. Um, because I say it's controversial because um, there was another conversation in the Bible where the Pharisees then told Jesus and said, so why did uh, Moses wrote the bill? Uh, why did God allow? Uh, why did God give Moses the bill of divorce, you know, the, give, God told Moses to allow the people to put away their wife. Uh, Malachi chapter 2 verses, he said, I, the Lord, I hate putting away. 
So especially for men, <laughs> because uh, most of the times we are the one, you are the one who put away our wives. Uh, we put them away. Okay, the Lord have mercy, <laughs> have less, have mercy on the men. And so uh, he said, "I, the Lord, I hate divorce." Here's the Lord. That's what he says. Those are his words. They are not my words. You may not like what I said. <laughs> That's me. Uh, does that mean that you cannot put away your wife? Following the law of Moses, yes, of course, you can do. Uh, when you follow the law of Moses, you can do. <laughs> it's the scripture, isn't it? Uh, but uh, the Bible says the Lord created them male and female. In the beginning, he created them as one. And the reason why he created them as one was so they can raise godly seed. So um, I, I, don't, I, I, I think I understand why divorce came in. He said, because of the hardness of your heart, so that you won't kill yourself, so that you won't kill that woman of God, you will not kill that man of God, so that they can fulfill the assignment and the purpose of God for their life. Oh, have I approved divorce? No. Um, <laughs> that's what the scripture says. What do God delight in? What, what is it that he likes? This is my favorite scripture. Uh, in the last three to four months, the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture. Oh my God. I, I guide it everywhere I go is in my heart. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. Let him that boasts, boast in this one thing, that he understand me. God said, let him that boasts, boast in this one thing, that he understand me and know me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. So, it's time that we begin to find out what God is interested in, what God is doing. But more importantly, as we walk with God, as we do what we do for the Lord, and uh, as we do what he asks us to do in his kingdom, it's important for us to ask him to help us understand what's important to him. Now, uh, healing is important to him. He wants to make you well. If healing is not important to God, Jesus wouldn't have taken those stripes on his body. He said that by his stripe you were healed. So if God take it so seriously because you can't serve him when you are sick, you cannot go and witness, you cannot go and evangelize. And let me just drop this thing about evangelism. Most of the time, uh, the evangelism isn't about you go out and then you talk to them and they are converted. You see, it's the Lord who makes people ready. Uh, sometimes you just go out, all you are doing is that uh, you are also sowing the seed of the world. Some other people have sowed you water until the person is ready for harvest. And uh, it may be that the Lord wants you to have that harvest. Praise the Lord. But if you don't get harvest that day, just can't it, you know, can't yourself happy that you have obeyed the Lord and then, you know, you have been his witness. The most important thing is that uh, we must be a witness and we cannot just do that by our attitude. Look, let me tell you the truth and stop deceiving yourself. Listen to me clearly, brothers and sisters. Uh, how many people do you have in your organization? No matter how good you are in your company, you can maximum only reach out through your character or your attitude to i mean maximum five thousand in one building that that is if you know everyone in a year uh but um what's five thousand maybe one hundred or even ten but you can imagine if you go out on the street and you are handing out tracks to people and uh, we got loads of tracks if you email us if you send your email address to us uh we are going to send it to you free of charge you know or you go there are uh christian ministries that distribute tracts online you go and get from them and just hand it out put your telephone number there or your church phone number there so that if they have questions they can call you uh you can imagine if you give out 100 let's even say 50 if you give out 50 uh, you go out once in a week and then you give out 50 every saturday for example so you we have um how many saturdays in a year 52 so let's say 
uh you are only able to do it 40 so 5 uh, 50 times 40 how many is that that's about 2000 isn't it if i if i my mathematics is correct uh, you will have given out more than 2000 in a year so you've reached more people by going i mean you can imagine if you are not able to give out like about 100 you double that look at the number of people that you have been able to minister to uh that you have been able to reach in a year so it's good to actually go out there sometimes you know some people won't won't even give you the audience to talk to them or if you just stretch it out and say good evening god bless you you know it has been a long time that some people have had people say god bless you uh or you just say have a wonderful weekend uh, nobody uh, even uh, one day i went out and i said god bless you have a wonderful weekend and the man said i have not had that in the last three to four years and the man said please can i hug you i need some love i'm like oh my god god bless you you know that made my day that's what i'm talking about you hug the people at your office all the time you've been talking to them uh they see that today you are a good person tomorrow they see the other side of you so they don't even know which one to believe now but you have opportunity to go out and talk to someone let's pray for those who are sick lord jesus healing is children's bread i ask you to raise up as many as are sick today i rebuke headache in the mighty name of jesus i command every pain uh, rheumatism back pain i command you to go right now in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord for that i give you praise lord blessed be your name lord thank you lord for all this miracle i just want you to lift your hands up to god and say lord thank you i receive my healing in jesus name I receive wholeness. I receive my healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you and I bless your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Before I go, I like someone to become born again. I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. One of the main reason why we do this is to reach out to people and get them to come onto the Lord's side. So if you want to accept Jesus Christ, as your lord and savior this is an invitation for you to know god personally i want you to say this after me say lord jesus i confess that i am a sinner i repent of my sins today i believe you die for me so i can have eternal life i ask you to come into my heart be my lord and savior in jesus name amen and amen you know i've had somebody say this why do you have to say that prayer you go and read the book of romans it says that with a heart a man believe with your mouth confession is made unto salvation so when the word of the lord is preached and people feel like you know what i want to know god i want i want to take my walk with him seriously so faith is built in their heart now the way salvation comes is true confession you have to say it with your mouth that's what the word of the lord says the god himself the god who makes everything holy and whole make you holy and whole put you together spirit soul and body and keep your faith for the coming of our master jesus christ the one who called you is completely dependable if he said it he will do it don't forget to take, get in touch with us our address is on the screen our email address and um, our telephone number so we run a food bank facility at our looting office so please get in touch with us if you need help if you need bible we can give you bible just get in touch with us whatever you need we are committed to your spiritual uh, development and uh, please find a church that you can attend so if the Lord is leading you to come and be part of the fellowship please uh, write us or text us we'll give you the description on how to join this last Friday is our question and answer time do you have any question or something that you cannot ask your pastor
Say, but Abuki, how did you know that? Yes, because I've been there. I know a lot of people come to me and they won't go and ask the pastor. Okay, so uh, you can't ask your pastor because you're going to be termed as a rebel. So please send in your question, email us with your question. And please do make sure you join us on Friday, 9 o'clock. Uh, we are going to be answering those questions. Uh, until I come your way with a fresh edition of the Mirror of the World. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to please share this video with someone on your page and use it to evangelize. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.